This week on Ninja Lab, we wrap up 2019 by going the results of Iron Grip Ninja, Vitality Obstacle Fitness, Center Court Lawrence, Apex NorCal, Saratoga Ninja Lab, Zakaria Ninja Warrior, Ninja Warrior Playground, and Iron City Ninja. That's right, it's just a big remainder of 2019 blowout. My name is William, and let's get started with the results of Iron Grip Ninja. In third place for the adult female division was Ariel Hall. Ariel was returning from injury and looked pretty good making her way through the ring hallway, and even the Devil Steps was no match for her. However, when she attempted the doorknob grasper, she unfortunately was unable to maintain her grip and she slipped off the obstacle. However, the good news is that not only does she earn 8 points towards her season standings, she qualifies for the World Championship in February. In second place was Jennifer Stefano. Jennifer was able to go much deeper in the course, including completing the much difficult Cerberus in 3 minutes and 40.97 seconds. However, when she reached the big ring launch, she was unable to bridge the distance and came up short on the obstacle, netting her 9 points towards her season total. And in first place was Sophia Oster. Sophia was able to get through the course with strength and confidence and completed the dangerous Cerberus in 3 minutes and 21.09 seconds. It looked like she originally was able to bridge the gap in the giant ring swing, but unfortunately upon review it was confirmed that her foot just landed out of bounds and she was disqualified on that obstacle. Which is a shame because afterwards she was able to reach the second to last obstacle within the time limit. But the good news is that she still finished in first place and earned 10 more points towards her season total. In third place for the adult male division was Ian Muller. Ian was able to complete a majority of the course, including this challenging balance obstacle involving tires. Unfortunately, the bad news is that he timed out on the last obstacle. The good news, however, is that he completed the second to last obstacle, You're Driving Me Nuts, faster than the other people who failed the final obstacle, meaning that not only does he earn eight points and a third place finish, but he qualifies for our world championship in February. In second place is Isaac Blackburn. Time is of the essence for this course, and Isaac was able to get through the course in a very steady pace. And even though he almost failed at the very end of the last obstacle, he was able to save himself on the PVC bridge and climb to the top to hit the buzzer, finishing the course in 3 minutes and 45.8 seconds. And in first place was Michael Borger. Michael sped through the first half of this course without really taking any breaks in between obstacles. By the time he reached the final obstacle, he had a full minute left on the clock. This allowed him to calmly and safely make it through the final obstacle without any slip-ups or worries as he was able to take first place by finishing the course in a time of 3 minutes and 38.1 seconds. Michael's performance allowed him to qualify for the world championship in February and nets him his first 10 points towards his standings for the season.
Remember everyone, the Season 5 World Championship is less than 6 weeks away. If you still want to qualify to compete in the event, you have to go to NationalNinja.com to look up the schedule of our upcoming qualifiers. There's still time! Now, let's look at the results of Vitality Obstacle Fitness. In third place for the adult female division was Kyra Tatlow. Kyra was looking very good on the course early on, just speeding through and completing the tidy dancer in a minute 38.6 seconds, and was looking like she could go far. But unfortunately, when she reached Vitality's version of the spin hopper, she was unable to make the first transfer and was eliminated. But she does earn eight more points to her total. In second place was Alyssa Beard. The Stage 2 veteran was looking very strong on the course and even finished the Tiny Dancer faster than Kyra with a time of a minute 36.13. However, just like Kyra, she failed in the exact same spot of the Super Spin Hopper and was taken out on the course. And in first place was Casey Rothschild. Casey had the benefit of going super late during that day, so she knew that she had to complete the Tiny Dancer faster than Alyssa. And thankfully for her, she did by completing it in a minute 13.4. However, she was actually able to get further through the Super Spin Hopper than Alyssa and Kira. But unfortunately, she still went down on the obstacle, so her time through the Tiny Dancer was very beneficial as it netted her a first place finish and 10 more points. For the adult male division, in third place was John Uga. John was able to muscle his way through the Super Spin Hopper and was able to methodically make his way to the Warped Wall and complete it in a time of 2 minutes and 31.92 seconds. However, when he was faced with the real Ninja Killer, the UFO Launcher, he was unable to make the transfer and was eliminated from the course. But he still finishes in third place. In second place is Nolan LaJoy. Nolan continues his impressive season by reaching the UFOs faster than John in a time of 1 minute and 45.38 seconds. However, just like John, he was unable to make the Lache on the UFOs and was eliminated on that obstacle. And in first place was Lucas Reale. Not only was the former Stage 3 competitor able to complete the dangerous UFO obstacle, he was also able to complete the three remaining challenging obstacles that followed, making him the only finisher on the course, finishing at a time of 3 minutes and 54.63 seconds, earning him a total of 10 more points for his standings this season. Here's a special announcement. If you're interested in getting your own National Ninja League merchandise, including t-shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, check out the link in the description below in order to go directly to our store page. Now, let's look at the results for Center Court Lawrence. In third place for the adult female division was Mei Ling Huang. Despite some early troubles on the liftoff obstacle, she was able to power through the first half of the course and uh, complete the orange slice and dice in a time of 2 minutes and 30.59 seconds. Unfortunately, when she reached the French toast sticks, a misstep caused her to fall on the obstacle and stop her run.
In second place was Rachel de Guts. Like Mei Ling, eight, Rachel also failed the French toast sticks by taking a header at the end of the obstacle. However, because she experienced less difficulty early on in the course, she was able to complete the orange slice and dice in a minute 45.34 meaning that she secured second place by finishing that obstacle much faster than Mei Ling did. And in first place was Malia Oshner. Malia had a much slower pace than Rachel uh, heading up to the French toast sticks due to getting hung up on the orange uh, slice and dice due to getting hung up on the ring specifically. However, when she faced the French toast sticks, she was able to complete the obstacle despite taking a dramatic dive at the end on the landing platform. This secured her first place finish, despite the fact that she immediately failed the chef grab right after that. In third place for the adult male division was Ivan King. Ivan also had a very scary landing on the French toast sticks, but fortunately he is okay. And then he was the only one of three people to complete the Destroyer, but when he attempted the second to last obstacle, one slip up right away took him out of contention, and he was eliminated on that obstacle. But the good news is that his performance net him an extra eight points in his standings for the season. In second place was Paul Fisher. Unlike Ivan, Paul was able to complete the Did You Sign the Waiver obstacle and was on his way to potentially completing the course. But with the clock ticking down, Paul was unable to complete the final obstacle, the piston cliffhanger, and fell mere inches from the final pedestal and missing out on hitting the button. But it was still good enough for 9 points in his standings and a second place finish. And in first place was Najee Richardson. The Phoenix was truly able to rise up by speeding through the course with little to no difficulty whatsoever, and was the only person able to complete the entire course. In fact, he finished the course almost 90 seconds faster than it took Paul to complete the second to last obstacle. This earns Najee 10 more points for his standings and another solid first place victory. And now, it's time for the common question of the week. What's your ninja New Year's resolution? Let me know your answers in the comments below. And I'll read them. I always read them. Now let's look at the results of Apex NorCal. In second place for the adult female division was Marissa Nelson. Marissa got off to a good start on the course, but unfortunately she got hung up on the swinging ring transfer and got stuck on the same spot for over a minute until her grip eventually gave out. And in first place was Tiana Weberly. Tiana was able to get through the ring transfer right away, securing her first place victory, and then was able to calmly and smoothly make her way through almost the entire rest of the course. However, when she reached the final obstacle, she was unable to make the transfer and fell. But she still earns 10 more points to her total.
In third place for the adult male division was Kevin Bull. Kevin was able to calmly and smoothly get through a majority of the course despite a slight crookedness on the salmon ladder, but when he reached the final obstacle, he was unable to make the first UFO transfer and went down. Unfortunately, his pace probably would have put him in first place if he had moved on to complete the course. Earning himself a spot in the World Championship in February, in second place was Hunter Swan. While Hunter's pace was much more slow and methodical than Kevin's, Hunter was able to make his way through the entirety of the course, completing the transfers that both Kevin and Tiana were able to fail uh, during their runs. And Hunter was able to complete the entire course in 2 minutes and 58.23 seconds. And in first place was Verdale Benson. This beast of a man was able to power through the entire course with very little difficulty along the way. And he was able to complete the course with a time of 2 minutes and 51.85 seconds. This first place finish not only guarantees him 10 points in the standings, but allows him to qualify for our world championship in February. All right, everyone, uh, some bad news. Uh, there are a handful of gyms that we don't have the uh, separately recorded footage for. Now, if you want, you can go to the National Ninja Look Facebook page to watch the raw live streams from these events. But here are the results for uh, a few of our gym events. Uh, first up, Ninja Warrior Playground for the adult female division. In third place was Corey Porter, who completed... You'll shoot your eye out in 1 minute 53.18 seconds. In second place was Amy Edwards who completed You'll shoot your eye out in 1 minute and 43.64 seconds. And in first place was Nikki Perella who has been scoring a lot of victories lately who completed the You'll shoot your eye out uh, obstacle in 1 minute 11.91 seconds. For the adult male division, in third place was Chad Riddle, who completed the gumdrop climb in 3 minutes and 8.69 seconds, which qualifies him for a world championship in February. In second place was Julius Ferguson, who completed the gumdrop climb in 2 minutes and 59.57 seconds. And in first place was Colt Scott, who completed the Candy Cane Forest in 3 minutes and 49.5 seconds, which qualifies him for the National Ninja League World Championship in February. For the Saratoga Ninja Lab qualifier, for the adult female division, in third place was Alex Cat, who completed the, 30, the Throwing Star in 14.91 seconds and... Uh, that qualifies her for the world championship in second place was Mary Langton who completed drop it like it's hot and in Casey Rothschild is uh, is the one who finished in first place for the adult females who completed monstro mayhem and for the adult males all three of our top three failed monstro mayhem in third place was Matt Swalbowski who completed the obstacle in two minutes and 35.55 seconds in second place was Anthony Eerly, who completed the obstacle in 2 minutes and 6.37 seconds, which qualifies him for our world championship in February. And in first place was Eva Eli Chavalier, who completed the obstacle in 1 minute and 25.68 seconds, earning him 10 points on our leaderboard. For the Zakata Ninja Warrior Qualifier, and for the Adult Female Division, in third place was Rachel Franz, who completed Cannonball Alley. 
in second place was Sarah Catone, who completed UFO Alley in 2 minutes and 45.36 seconds, which qualifies her for a world championship in February. In first place for the adult female division was Ashley Gianni, who completed the UFO Alley in 2 minutes and 31.14 seconds, which qualifies her for a world championship in February. Now, all three of our male uh, qualifiers for Cicada qualified for our world championship in February uh, with their runs in this qualifier. In third place was Luke Corona, who completed the mini tramp in 2 minutes and 34.46 seconds. In second place was Hikmak Halleck, who completed the mini tramp in 2 minutes 26.39 seconds. And in first place was Adam Cole, baby, who finished the entire course in 3 minutes and 19 seconds flat. And in uh, for the Ninja Mania qualifier for the adult female division, in third place was Lindsay Littlefield, who completed Roll the Dice. And second place was Alyssa Beard, who completed the Wishbone. And in first place was Taylor Johnson, who made it one f- obstacle further by completing the Sliding Cliffhanger. For the adult male division, in third place was Nolan LaJoy, who... Uh, failed the final obstacle, but completed the pipe shuffler in 2 minutes and 35 seconds exactly. In second place was Dave Cavanaugh, who failed in the same obstacle, but completed the pipe shuffler in 2 minutes and 2.5 seconds. And in first place was Joe Moroski, who was the only finisher. He finished the whole course in 2 minutes and 34.66 seconds. Now, let's finish up with the results for Iron City Ninja. So all three of the top three women failed the skydive obstacle, so it was a race to see who can get there the fastest. In third place was Jennifer Stefano. Jennifer was looking pretty good on the course early on, but when she reached takeoff, which is a warped wall with no run-up, she just got stuck. She spent about three and a half minutes on the obstacle, constantly trying to get up that wall. However, she was eventually able to make her way up the warped wall and complete the obstacle. And that effort rewarded her with a third place finish. In second place was Mrs. Claus herself, Nikki Perella. Nikki was able to complete takeoff about 90 seconds faster than Jennifer did, meaning that she was able to secure second place after she got hung up on skydive and just went out because her grip gave out. But a solid performance for the woman who was battling for first place. And in first place was Sophia Oster. As previously stated, takeoff was the real stopping point for the women, as she was able to complete the obstacle just about 13 seconds faster than Nikki, securing her first place finish. And a good thing too, she spent a long time on skydive also before her grip eventually gave out and she went down. But the good news is that she earned 10 more points towards her standing for the season. The Iron City course featured six finishers, including three Kleins. So in third place for the adult male division was Colt Klein. Colt was able to get through the course at a very steady pace, including shuffling through the bridge building obstacle, and was able to complete the rope building obstacle with relatively ease. However, he was able to complete the course in a time of 4 minutes and 31.17 seconds, which was a little bit slower than two people who beat him.
In second place was Ryan Sanders. The key difference in his run was that he was able to complete and make his way across his rope building obstacle much faster than Colt did, having used only a few loops and making through the entire obstacle much, much quicker. However, he was still only able to complete the course in 4 minutes and 13.35 seconds, which is still slower than the man who took first. And that man was Kay Klein, who finished not only first of the Kleins, but first of the adult males. Even though he had some difficulty completing takeoff, he was able to use the benefit of going almost last to gain all this information of how to do the obstacles from the other competitors, and was able to make up enough time to complete the entire course in 3 minutes and 45.13 seconds, earning him a full 10 points towards his season total. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to click here in order to subscribe and know when new videos go live, and click here to watch full runs from our qualifiers from this season. N next Ninja Lab will be up very soon. See you all later. Bye.